This week has given us everything we hoped and more. Jump bots, nail biters, tie breakers, high flyers, Fs, and upsets galore. Numbers have lost all meaning as any alliance has the capacity to win. With four events combining for eight fields, these final matches did not disappoint as all these teams made a mad dash to the remaining slots for Worlds. Let's see who won these district championships. Welcome to the state of Michigan, where seeding means f***ing nothing. Anyone has a chance to beat anyone else. These bots were so on fire that the fire alarms went off as a testament to the heat these teams brought with them. You want lower seeds making it to the finals? They got them. You want four fields running at the same time? Got them. You want a man dressed as a banana running around with a jar of pickles and leading the judges in a conga line? Say less, my dude. At the Ford Division, we had the one seed of the Biting Bulldogs and their partner Killer Bees take on the two seed of Comet and Enigma Robotics. 33 got their five cargo auto going, while 2075 got five of their own. Red got the early lead, but Blue started cooking up shots to keep pace with the top alliance. Killer Bees and Biting Bulldogs got the double traversal for Red, while Comets got up for Blue. Enigma didn't have a clear path to the hangar for a hanging attempt, and if only, if only, as the Red Alliance came away with the 15 point win. The four seed of Tech Vikes and the Fighting Pie in Red fought the three seed of Robo Jackets and Strike Zone. Fighting Pie got five balls in auto for Red, while the Robo Jackets got four, including a bit of three at a time shooting. Skyline and Fighting Pie went after the high hub as Blue slowly gained the lead. Both sides didn't defend shooting, they defended cargo to slow down cycle times. Jacktown Vectors and Robovikes got to the traversal for red, with the Fighting Pie joining them at the mid. Blue just got two hanging, but they got enough cargo to force a tiebreaker. All these robots had the exact same autos, with red taking the lead. Both sides played defense a bit chippier because this was a must win match. Blue made it rain, and Red had tough bounces, and Blue started pulling away. 5460's keep away made it tough for Red to get cargo, and their own shots helped extend Blue's lead. Both sides got two bots up in the hangar, but all that cargo gave the three seed the win. Two powerful forces made up the one seed at the Aptive Division, Strike Force and Frog Force. Their alliance went up against the sixth seed of the Dragons and Metal Muscle. Strike Force's last two shots didn't go in auto, but hitting them right away in Teleop tied things up. Red looked to sweep the series, but Strike Force hit the pesky bump in the road, leaving Red without their captain. Blue couldn't get the advantage at the hub, even with the three on two, but the hangar has been a deciding factor in many matches. 302 and 3536 got the traversal, while 503 and 5612 only managed the mid. Time for another tiebreaker. Strike Force got three cargo and auto to start match three, while the Electro Eagles' last two shots had too much oomph on them. Blue went to the defensive, but Strike Force showed what they could do with all their wheels on the ground. Blue tried to keep up with Red scoring, but some unlucky bounces kept the game going Red's way. Strike Force got to the traversal, while the Dragons fell off at the high bar. A clean match that the Red Alliance won by 33 points. 
The one seed of Rush and the Engine Nerds faced off against the two seed of the Martians and the Copperbots. All the bots got cargo and autonomous and went into Teleop tied at 30. This one went back and forth as each side frantically shot cargo up top. Red pulled away with the lead into Endgame, but the copper bots made it quickly up the hangar for Blue. Rush got the high and the engine nerds got the mid before time expired. A very close match and the Red Alliance moves on. After all those matches, we get Rush's one seed from Consumer's Energy against the Robo Jacket's three seed from DTE. Robo Jackets got the three ball shooting going while their fifth shot almost went in, while Rush's five shots gave Blue the lead. Blue wanted a tiebreaker as Engine Nerds and Rush drained high cargo and Torknados played defense on Strike Zone. Blue slowly gained the lead, but Red wasn't out of it yet. Both sides got a double traversal and Blue got the very, very close win to force a third match. All the robots had no trouble in auto as Blue took another early four point lead. 5460 bottomed out on some blue cargo, but 3538 came through to put them back on the ground again. Rush and Engine Nerds kept those shots coming while Torknados played excellent defense yet again. Blue pulled away in the tiebreaker, but Red was not far behind. Red got two hanging, while Blue got the double traversal, and 5090 raced over to hang on the mid as time expired. Another one of those matches that could have gone either way, but the Blue Consumers Energy Alliance came away as Michigan champs. The New England District Championship had two fields going, with the winners of both playing each other in a grand finals. The one seed of the Crusaders, Aces High, and South Coast Coursers won the Titanium Division and faced off against the other one seed of Galehawks, Bobcat Robotics, and Redshift, who won the Calcium Division. One alliance had 230 and 177, the other had 238 and 176. This won't get confusing at all. The Blue Alliance from Titanium won the first match and looked to put it away. Autonomous in match two came up 26 apiece with 6846 wasting no time defending the Red Captain. 176 and 238 kept draining those shots for Blue as Red tried to keep chase. Both sides got the double traversal and 177 zoomed to the hangar and got the mid at the last second. Defense wins championships and the Blue Alliance won the New England Championship 114 to 96. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. 7457 Super Duper Robotics came into Indiana Champs undefeated. They lost just two matches in quals, but a red card negated a win, and since ranking points go burr, they ranked fourth overall before Purple Precision selected them as the first pick. That one-seeded alliance matched up against the three-seed of Galactech and the Digital Goats. That three-seed made it to the finals by way of two extremely close wins over the seven-seed in semis. Match one of the finals ended in a blue win after 3147's truck gave the Red Alliance a red card. Match two had Super Duper hit four auto shots to help give Red the lead. 7457 kept draining those high shots as Blue rallied to stay in it. 4926 played pretty great defense, but Blue couldn't capitalize on offense. All these teams stayed upright, and Red got two bots right up to the traversal. 4936 
nabbed the traversal for blue, but 829's hanging troubles settled them at the high bar. This event needs a tiebreaker. 4926 fixed their autonomous issue and drained three shots, while 7617 put up two as well. 7457's four ball auto remained consistent and cued the red human player with the absolute bucket. LeBron, we found your man. The Blue Alliance entered Teleop with the lead and looked to extend it with a three on two after 3147 stalled out pretty much immediately after Teleop started. All three blue bots went after the high hub, but the two remaining red bots wouldn't go that easily. They kept the game even, navigating blue pressure and rarely missing their shots. Super Duper got all the way up for red, but all three bots got off the ground. The fact that red made this match competitive showed their incredible ability. The fact that the head FTA had this big a smile on his face meant that something just as incredible had happened. Even the tiebreaker needs a tiebreaker. But the four points of penalty you cry out, and I cry out, we all cry out, that should be the tiebreaker. In previous years, yes. A tie in a tiebreaker goes to the alliance with the fewest penalty points. See 2056's Heartbreaker in 2016. But this year isn't like previous years. Oh yeah, we need to go to the rule book. In finals matches, the champion alliance is the first alliance to win two matches. In the case where an alliance hasn't won two matches after three matches have been played, the playoffs proceed with up to three additional finals matches called overtime matches until an alliance has won two finals matches. You may recall 2019 Michigan State's going to five finals matches because neither side wanted to lose, whereas a tie in a tiebreaker doesn't go to penalty points, a tie in the overtime match will go to penalty points. The blue side got a two point lead in auto in the fourth match. 3147 had more connection issues, but they came back to life after 20 seconds. Blue's defense slowed down red scoring just enough for them to maintain a slim lead. Red got only one bot on the traversal, while Blue got two hanging. An incredible match, an incredible series, but the three-seeded Blue Alliance got the win. The return of the dangerous duo. Symbotics and OP Robotics go together like peanut butter and jelly, like white on rice like millennials and crippling depression. Sure, Cheesies and Citrus stomped their way through two regionals to tie as the third most successful team up, but that only puts them at six events won together. 11, 14, and 2056 have won 19 together. If 254 and 1678 are Batman and Robin, 1114 and 2056 are the Silver Surfer and Galactus. This duo hoped to steamroll the seven seed of Cyber Cavs, Team Dave, and Crescent Coyotes. But the Blue Alliance won match one after Symbotics hit 610, causing them to stall out, resulting in a red card. Match 2 started out the way everyone hoped, with all the robots moving. All tied out of auto, as OP and Symbotics went to work at the high hub. 4152 played great defense on 4678, as 610 defended Symbotics. Symbotics knocked over the Coyotes, and everyone thought that's how this event would end. Red made light work of the 3-on-2, 
as the remaining blue bots hoped the hangar could change things. Red got the double traversal as this match went under review. The refs ruled that collision as incidental contact, or whatever they call it that basically means that no cards would be issued. Meaning, we need a third match. This time, OP brought out the 5 ball auto as 4678 did the same for Blue. A must win match with the dangerous duo giving Red the lead and 4152 slowing up Blue shooting. 4152 again reached the traversal while OP joined them at the high. 610 stayed upright and stayed in motion but couldn't make it to the hangar. The Red Alliance wins Ontario and 2056 and 1114 win their 20th event together. But quite possibly the most important part to come out of all of this, the jump bot is going to worlds. <laughs> the best part about this week is knowing that it will only get better from here. This season has been phenomenal and Worlds will be the same. If you're at Worlds, congratulations. Have fun, enjoy the matches, collect a metric ton of buttons from the pits, see if they have Abe Lincoln's creepy robo head. If your season is over, I hope you had fun. And I hope you'll come back to first in one way or another. Whether it's being on a team, mentoring, volunteering, or just making cheap recap videos about the regionals. I will see you next week debriefing the exciting conclusion of this FRC season where we crown some champions. Until then, stay safe, stay hyped for Einstein, and remember, gracious in victory, professional in defeat, Amen. No way! Unbelievable! No way! 109 to 109. You know what that means. We get to do it one more oh time. Oh my goodness!